Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey, and today we're going to discuss T-Ball only cycles. So as with most or all of these certain drug only cycle videos, I'm going to start with a brief overview of T-Ball, looking into the research, and then finally at the end we're going to try sum it up and put it all of that research into designing a T-Ball only cycle and looking at what you can expect from such cycles. So I've been asked to review T-Ball for quite some time, however I delayed this due to the lack of research. And by the lack of research, I mean the lack of mainstream research. In fact, there are only about three published good quality studies on Tyrannable. Perhaps more, but these are the only ones that have been peer-reviewed and been published by a reputable journal. There are a lot of studies, however, on T-Ball that were done during the, or under the German Democratic Republic. However, a lot of these studies were confidential and weren't peer-reviewed and were not published in reputable journals. In fact, a lot of SARMs have more research available than T-Ball does, but I suppose T-Ball is favored over SARMs because it is a 17-alpha alkylated steroid and thus has that predictability. So, as I've alluded to at the beginning of this video, it was a drug that was commonly used under the German Democratic Republic. They used it in a big scandal involving doping in their athletes, and they doped their athletes under this big program in order to improve Im or self-image of the country and to further promote their propaganda. So it was studied quite extensively and quite covertly from the 60s to the 80s in humans, in athletes in particular. In fact, it was used in children, the youngest being 13 that I could find. But as I mentioned, a lot of this research is in German and not available to the public or readily available. Um, I tried looking for these journals, and most of them seem to be in libraries in the United States. And again, a lot of the studies that they did do were either case reports or poorly designed case control studies. But I will look at a review of this literature later on. So another massive issue with these studies is that there wasn't any blinding. The athletes knew what they were taking, although some thought they were just taking vitamins, especially the young individuals. But another problem is it wasn't very well controlled. In fact, a lot of coaches who were given the drugs by the researchers would commonly use more than what was supposed to be used. And again, they didn't really look at serum markers and other health effects of these of T-Ball. They just wanted to know whether or not it improved the athletic performance. Health wasn't really the major concern. Another issue is that athletes rarely just use T-Ball. It was a common drug to be used by individuals and was the main drug to be used. However, testosterone was commonly used um, and it was even used in women. So when looking at these studies and looking at the side effects reported, it's difficult to know whether it was due to T-Ball or a mix of T-Ball and testosterone. So let's start from the very beginning and look at pharmacokinetics and just the general chemistry of T-Ball or Turanable. So essentially it's a 4-chloro substitute derivative of Dianabol, so it is fairly similar to Dianabol, um, and a lot of people report it being a mix between Anavar and Dianabol. And since Dianabol is a derivative of testosterone, T-Ball is a derivative of testosterone too. The half-life, or terminal half-life, of T-Ball is 16 hours, which is why it's commonly dosed once daily. And plasma peaks tend to reach a maximum at around 3 hours. This means that taking it 3 hours to your workout would mean you had the highest peak during your workout. Its metabolites are preferentially excreted through the kidneys, but this does not mean it's metabolized by the kidneys. This is a common misconception. This misconception is also common with 
um, interpretation of data on oxandrolone or anabar. It has quite a high affinity to SHBG, um, as do most steroids, and therefore decreases the level of SHBG, which means it increases free circulating hormones, which is why it's quite potent when combined with other steroids, because you get more free active steroid. Dosages commonly used range from 10 milligrams daily up to 100 milligrams, with most people sticking between 20 to 60. In the studies, it was in, it's interesting to note that a lot of the women took between 10 milligrams all the way up to 30 milligrams. So what can you expect in terms of gains? Or just general benefits? What are the pros? So the data seems to suggest it's better at improving athletic performance instead of typical bodybuilding performance. And these effects are a lot more noticeable in women than they are in men. In terms of muscle mass, it wasn't a primary outcome of many of the studies. The primary outcomes were performance, such as strength or times if they were a swimmer or a sprinter. And from these studies, the improvement in sprinting or short bursts of power and strength were the most noticeably affected or improved element. And these graphs demonstrate how effectively they are at improving strength. It seemed to be very beneficial in shot putters. So, but most people are interested in muscle mass because mostly it is used nowadays for bodybuilding purposes. So in terms of muscle mass, again, it wasn't a primary outcome, so they didn't really look at body composition so much. But in one study, there was a side effect of increased weight gain, and only 23% noted this increase in weight. Now this doesn't necessarily mean T-ball doesn't result in muscle mass, as there could be a change in body composition with a decrease in fat mass and an increase in muscle mass which is probably the case. However, it's not like Dianabol, where there was, or testosterone, where there was a noticeable increase in weight of up to 10 kilograms. Furthermore, the fact that it doesn't cause a lot of weight gain is probably the reason why it's more favorable in an athletic context. Because extra muscle in an athlete means extra weight, and that means they have to compensate for extra weight, which is quite difficult when you've become comfortable with your body weight. And it's quite surprising because although only dosages of 40 milligrams were supposed to be used in males, it was quite commonly known that they went up to 100 milligrams, and these gains were not noted. The weight gain of 23% of individuals noticing weight gain, the majority of them were women. So this hypothesis that T-ball isn't great from a muscle mass perspective probably does have a bit of evidence to it. But I don't know, there aren't really any human trials in, of T-ball that are reputable. So let's look at the side effects. Again, this is incredibly difficult to assess because it was known that the athletes were taking more than the prescribed amount, which means side effects are, would be more common. Furthermore, they were also using this in combination with other drugs such as testosterone. And there's no surprise that it is quite virilizing or androgenic because a lot of women notice a deepening in their voice and body hair, as well as a massive increase in libido, and this led to a lot discontinuing oral tyrannobol. This suggests that it is in fact not as selective as Anavar or SARMs, and a lot of people on Reddit say, oh, it's not very androgenic and very anabolic, but this would suggest that it is quite androgenic, and I do know a lot of males who suffer from androgenic side effects when doing, using T-ball. Androgenic side effects in males include balding, as well as acne, and amongst other things it could be excessive hair, body hair growth, things like that. A negative side of that would be prostate issues. Again, what's commonly mentioned is that, oh, it's not very toxic to the liver and quite safe in the liver, and they base this on the fact that it was noted that it is excreted by the kidneys, but firstly, that has nothing to do with metabolism. 
Metabolism of the uh, 17 alpha alkylated compounds requires the liver. And nowhere does it say Turanabol is resistant to metabolism like Anavar, so Anavar does have evidence to suggest it wouldn't cause as much liver damage. However, there's no evidence to suggest Anavar is metabolized in the kidneys. It's just excreted unchanged, which means it's resistant to metabolism. And there's no evidence that suggests T-Ball is also resistant to metabolism, meaning it probably wouldn't have it a, a profound effect on your liver markers. Of note, there were a few fatalities in these studies, as well as a few, of a few cases of acute liver failure. They didn't look at suppression, um, but you could probably assume that you would be suppressed as you're putting an exogenous hormone in your body. A very commonly noted side effect in the studies and by people on forums are the pumps, or just muscle pain or tightness when training. They described it as muscle tightness. Now this is a very common thing with T-ball, especially lower back pumps. It's quite commonly known that it causes lower back pumps. So it's suggested that a, a way to mitigate this is through excessive taurine use. I, I haven't found enough evidence to prove that taurine does work, however a lot of people say it does. And most importantly in terms of health, it do will affect your lipids and can cause an increase in blood pressure, as it is a testosterone derivative, which means it will increase estrogen somehow and cause edema or water retention. And it was noted that it did cause that in the study, so you must look out for those side effects. So let's look at a T-ball only cycle. So could you do one? Well, the evidence would suggest you could, as a lot of these studies did include just T-ball only and you didn't need a testosterone base back then. And the results showed that it was very effective when used by itself. However, what is quite disheartening is they showed in these studies upon removing oral tyrannable or them coming off oral tyrannable the strength quite drastically decreased almost to baseline but it never went to baseline which was interesting to note another important factor to note is it probably will not benefit you from a bodybuilding perspective if aesthetics are your goal if it's athletic then well, if you want to achieve athletic goals, perhaps this is a better steroid. I don't suggest you use any steroid, but this is perhaps better for athlete athletes rather than bodybuilders. And again, a PCT will probably be necessary as with most compounds or exogenous steroids, suppression occurs. In terms of your liver, sure, you can take liver support or aid, but as I mentioned, if you are using the drug in a reasonable manner, these issues shouldn't occur. So I'm just going to have a quick rant, and that's about the popularity of T-Ball. I don't see why it's so popular, because a lot of the research is really poor quality, or is just lacking in general, and in fact a lot of people who would discredit SARM use because of the lack of research do use T-Ball, which probably has less research than that of RAD140. But will there ever be papers on oral tyrannable? To be honest, I don't see why there would be any new papers. Perhaps because of the negative connotations it got from its illicit use under the German De Democratic Republic, and just because Oxandrolone or Anavar already has so much information behind it and is has a very well demonstrated safety profile as well as selectivity that I don't think researchers see the need to swap to Turanable as Turanable did display it wasn't as selective and the incidence of side effects were higher. Granted the dosages used were higher but I don't see why you would select T-Ball over Anavar if you were going to st study a drug for its selectivity as well as anabolism. So that is everything you need to know about T-Ball, or everything that I know about T-Ball. Let me know if I've missed anything, or what you think about this, your opinions on T-Ball, whether you like it, dislike it, and I will see you in the next